Tisha B'Av, the ninth of the month of, by Rabbi Michael ben Pesach Portnar. As we have learned, the Creator created His creation by two powers, by Hasidim and by Gurot, by grace and by Din. That was His intention. Of course, grace is more than din, but din is also needed as salt is needed for soup or other dishes to give it flavor, etc. Din is much less than grace in the world. Only through the sin of Adam and then of the other generations, personal sins, etc. As we have learned in Zohar, din was abused by the unclean power. Man attracted chokmah, Thus, the unclean forces acquire too much power. As we have learned, this created four worlds of unclean forces. Thus, it seems to us that the world is in such a way that bad, that it seems bad. Bad to us and to be more than good. Of course, as a result of all alienation from the Creator. The world was created in such a way, and also man, that in an annual cycle, man must experience all those forces of the universe, actively experience them, consciously experience them, and not oppose the Creator. Moshe has received the laws of the universe and interpreted it to the people in the form of holidays. The Creator told him to do it that way. First, let's talk about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement on which there are a day of atonement, on which there are exactly the same prohibitions as on Tisha B'Av. Eating, drinking, sexual intercourse, anointing oneself, wearing leather shoes, five prohibitions corresponding to five svirot. The important thing is for people to adjust to those special days, holidays, and other days. Every year, the same kind of qualities manifest themselves, but of course, there is not the same as the year before, because every day there is a renewal and new forces. Not a day, not a moment resembles another, but qualitatively it is. Monday is always Monday, and every moment is different. So there are feasts and special days. Feasts instituted directly from the Torah, they are always set on the same days, and manifest in an annual cycle. Such as, for example, all creation, every leaf, every stone is placed, up, is placed before the Creator. And everything is placed on a balance of merits and sins. On that day, a budget is drawn up for people and everything that lives. We also see it in our world, that in most peoples of the world, the Council of Ministers meets. Just like we have Princess and Princess Days in the Netherlands, for instance. Why is that? Well, that also comes from above. That, in the same time, is projection of the higher. September is the time that a budget is being worked on and adopted. That is when the day set by the Torah, a day set from above in terms of the forces of the universe. Likewise, we have Pesach, the day of coming out of Egypt, and the three days Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, Receiving Torah is Shavuot, Feast of Weeks. Receiving Torah, and in the fall, Rosh Hashanah, the New Year. From the New Year on, the whole world is placed on the scale of merits and sins. There are also other days. Days that have to do with special corrections, such as Hanukkah. So against old and new, feast or holidays that had that do not flow directly from the Torah, but a kind of secondary forces that operate during that time of the year, and where certain corrections for man and mankind also take place. Likewise, we have Purim in the early spring. And there are also bigger and smaller fast holidays that have to do with different events. Events are results of something, and not that fasting is the result of an event, it is the underlying forces that determine and not this, the ninth of Av in the month of Av. 
What is Nine Ab? We have said that this is not a celebration. It is a fast day. And that too is a result of something. We cannot find Nine Av in the Torah. What special thing is it then that we say it is also the day of the Esa? The one day a year where the unclean power manifests itself in such a way that holiness is all buried under the unclean power. We know that everything is casual and nothing is accidental. Everything has a reason and absolutely everything has a reason. If we don't see the reason, it is that we don't see causation. First, the Creator gave the world the Torah. The Torah is the instruction on how to deal with the forces that are in the universe, the right side, the left side, and the central line, etc. It was so that the left side and the central line, etc. It was so that when the Torah was given and Moshe went down happy, glad, and radiant with the first stone tablets, he was not far from the Creator yet. And the Creator told him to go downstairs and to see what his people were doing. They started to dance and wondered, and wondered where Moshe had gone, because according to their calculations, it was too late. He should have come back already. They, Aaron, made a golden calf. It was, of course, a terrible sin. And if there was no carrier of the laws of the universe here on earth, how could the laws be permanent? Of course, we can say that the that those people came out of slavery, but we're talking about the forces, and they had sinned, a huge sin. It was so terrible that Moshe threw down those first two stone tablets, and they were smashed. He went crying, of course. Moshe returned to the Creator, and the Creator wanted to destroy the people, and Moshe pleaded for them. And they set a form of forgiveness, because nothing disappears in the spiritual, clearly. Is it clear, or clearly, nothing ever disappears? There must be a form of reconciliation for everything in order to be right. Moshe came up again and was given a new set of stone tablets, which was one thousandth of what was before. Can you imagine one thousandth of all that divine wisdom which there was? And then they went on in the right way, walked to the promised land, the land where man is able to give, that's the promised land. Israel is suited for just that. Why? The Creator gives and the land also gives. That was also the intention that the people of Israel would first conquer the land, conquer the unclean forces. There were seven would first conquer the land, conquer the unclean forces. There were seven peoples who were on the verge of being unable to repent. We feel that it is brutal or something, but we do not understand how the forces work. How many peoples in history have completed have completely disappeared from the earth because of their sins? When they were already near the promised land and were due to enter it, they requested Moshe to send spies into the land. Their faith was mixed with unbelief. They wanted to be on the safe side. They were of one, they were of one mind, and their family was like God to them. They had to muster faith to come into the country and fight with all those kings there, and they were aghast about that, and so they they were aghast about that. And so they asked Moshe to send spies to the land to tell how it works there. Moshe sent twelve distinguished people there. Moshe sent twelve distinguished people. Their top their top men from their own tribe. They entered the land and spied the land, and saw the great things. They saw that there were grapes as big as apples, and the land was blessed. You put a seed in the ground, and everything was easy. They returned, and ten of those spies told Lashon Hara, evil tongue, about that land, and that there are giants in the land. How can you control, how can you control them? They had undermined the faith. The people were not the stable any, anyway. All the kinds of other things they had said about that land, that the land devoured the people if they didn't fit there. Of course, all good family men, they all started to cry. That all happened on the ninth of Av. The same forces now at play because nothing disappears in the spirit. And that crying was really nothing because the land was beautiful. The Creator guided them. They could take the land. What they also 
would they would they also reach a top level spiritually then they would receive all the blessings in that land and all the blessings would also go to the nations and there would be a quick settlement of matters the coming of the Mashiach etc etc but instead of that they cried of course we should not think in a small human way how that works but before we continue I will tell you about this day of course that crying was their own invention but beyond that story this day of nine of is the day when the Dean manifests itself at top at the top level that's okay we have said that there are times like for example on Purim when there are tremendous joy in the world I'm also enormously productive productive in the time of spring I feel enormous powers even when I did not do Kabbalah yet now that I'm learning Kabbalah it does not matter at all to me the time I live in because all times are good times you will learn that too all those days including Yom Kippur you have to conform to those powers of that time now we live in a time when the Dean plays an enormous role if you agree on the day repent repent in a good way not a not a sad state sad and all that no that's all a comedy no need to do that what's on this day it is a day in the universe where the Dean manifests so besides the story of what happened to those spies and and things from the creation of the world and the first day in from the creation of the world it is the day of Dean that's okay because they are all forces of the universe man has to make and preparations only in the three weeks preceding this day let's say you go to court and you are summoned you prepare for it you prepare yourself for what it is for what this is and <clears throat> and it is the same here the human being must prepare and adapt to this day not resist and creative forces on this day that is required of us and then when we can be productive on this day too and draw blessings to us not that you think of when is Purim because that's a happy day a beautiful day but nine of is creepy no it is the day of Dean. What in the world we would call that day? The day of justice. What is wrong with justice? Only if you distort the law. That a person is going to commit a crime or something. That he has problems with the judiciary. But if a person already makes himself suitable, then it is not a problem. If a person already makes himself suitable, then it is not a problem. That we understand that there is nothing wrong in the day itself when those spies returned that was the night of the ninth of Av, a day beginning at the evening they began to speak ill of the land before all people can you imagine a huge sin you can get there and you can speak to the to the leader but not to the people they have specially started speaking to the people because then it becomes a referendum against entering the holy land but two were good on that night the day begins in the evening and the powers of Dean took place in the universe that means that people can take it because of course that people the, because of course that people feel weakened on this day why is that because we feel a tremendous power of Dean that would not be so bad but it is not the Dean itself the first real beginning was with those spies the whole people all the people laughed I made a mistake it is crying laughter came to me because the time will come when we will all laugh on that day because on that very day Mashiach the deliverer will come do you see the interplay between the two in terms of forces of the universe how is that possible they are next to each other Dean seems to so far from grace or mercy but it is next to each other it is not far it is only so in the experience of man they cried all night and blamed Moshe and Aharon a lot what did you do to us it was so great in Egypt we ate fish there and we felt at home there okay it was hard work but not like it is here where you are dragging us of course it is all in one human it is all in one human too it is all in one human it is all in one human too before we get to the promised land the closer we get there within ourselves 
and each one for himself, the more of those powers, those spies, come and tell about the land of giving, about your perfection, your Gmar Tikkun. They don't tell you to go to that country. They want, you, they want to dissuade. They want to dissuade you from getting there. They also come from above to give you new impulses, to test you again that despite the spies that tell us strange rumors about the country, you overcome and go beyond reason. Is that clear? Because they come and say that there are all giants there, all armed with, are like dwarves with respect to them. And of course, the country vomits everything that does not go with it. So, of course, we do not look at people. It is one man. It is, it is, we don't look at people. It is one man. The Torah tells us in this way. All gives us a lesson. The Torah also gives us a lesson. That was all that night. <clears throat> Actually, it was crying for nothing. It should actually be a joy to travel to that country together. In spite of saying those messages from the spies, it may be so, but we are beyond reason. You have to come, you have to overcome. It coincided with the dean of this day, and it was crying all night, etc. We have said the Creator was, has chosen His people, but the Creator cannot be corrupt, chosen or non-chosen. If you do your if you do good, you are chosen. Chosen means you can carry it out. All blessings come to you, and you bring it all to the world. That was the whole intention of that people. If not, you will be hit by a whip. The Creator said, as, as, it, were, in, as it were to them, in terms of powers, instead of having joy, you cry. We also need to learn what He has said. The days will come when you will cry a lot, not for nothing. In history, we have seen many things where there, where there was a lot of crying for what really meant crying. Nothing disappears in the spiritual. Of course, it was a huge sin that we still deal with, Jews and all kinds of other people. Important events, important events after that, including terrible events in the eyes of humanity, took place on that every or that very day, up, up to the including of the war of the Nazi Germany and up to the present day. First, what was the punishment or correction? Correction is also a form of punishment. Punishment is that something must first be felt. It is a form of denial of something. Like the crying that night, there had to be some form of reconciliation in the terms of strength. That night, there had to be some form of reconciliation in the terms of strength. Nothing disappears in the spiritual. The first ordinance, the ordinance in terms of our world, was, was that he wanted to wipe them all off the face of the earth. But of course, Moisha prayed, and they all prayed. But it was not enough. The sin was very great. As a result, the whole generation that went up out of Egypt with Moisha and was in the desert for 40 years, except those two good spies and that new generation, those who were up to 20 years old were allowed to live. The whole generation in the desert had to die in the desert. It was no longer worth entering the land of giving. The sin was too great, of course, on their level. This was the first. In fact, as the Midrash says, everyone just lay down in the tomb because everyone already knew that he would not enter the Holy Land. Even Moshe was not allowed to enter the campus of the land and look at the land, but he was not allowed to enter. You cannot play a comedy with the Creator. You should know this very well. If we know this correctly, you already have half the case. We can't play a comedy or hide anything and think he doesn't see it. You must know that wherever you are, you can never hide from the Creator, whether people see it or not, especially when other people don't see, don't see it, you have to be careful. So for the first time, was the whole generation had to pay for these tears of death, and they, paid with, with, and they paid with death. Furthermore, the first temple was destroyed on this day. Also, the result of, among other things, those first tears. On the same day, they destroyed the second temple. And on the same day, how the force of the universe worked. In the, in the sea, there was a great Roman emperor, Vespasian. And they also besieged the city of Bitar, where all those rebels were. 
Even Rabbi Akiva, the greatest sage, thought that Bar Kokhba, the leader of the insurgents, was already Mashiach, so it was instilled in him. They thought that the time of the Mashiach had already arrived and that they would be ready to fight against the Roman Empire. It is true that when a great power comes with great strength or great might, this people must always live in people must always live in peace. So if they come up there with tremendous power, what can you say? Well, the Creator gives to people power. All the power comes from above, also earthly power. Also to Alexander the Great. What can people do? They are not made to fight, but to bring peace. That is the strength of the people. The Romans could besiege a city of Betar. The whole city was surrounded by cannonades and everything. What chance did they have of surviving? It has to do with Din. As a result of this tshuva, repentance, must be made. That is also the teaching for us. Repentance, know how to come to the Creator. Then it is sweetened. Betar and the people were destroyed in the most gruesome way, all by the tears they had shed for nothing. Tears because of the land they stood on, or they stood next to, and it was also decided that they would regain control of this land and with enormous suffering. But only, is it, is it a geographic country? But the land is arranged to be an epicenter of the forces of the universe. There, that country, there must be a normal service that to the temple again and, of course, within. Another event was that Jerusalem was raised to the ground. All Jerusalem, Jerusalem was destroyed. And in Spain, in 1492, was the Inquisition. And just on that day of the, of the 9th of Av, they had issued a sentence to banish all Jews from Spain. They had to flee. On the way, there were gangs, robberies, etc. Why was it precisely on that day? Not only because of those tears, but extra sins were added. I'm not only talking about Jews. Everything is in one person. We can learn from it. If so, then we can avoid it and rearrange our ways. See what is like in Spain at the end of the 15th century. Jews lived in Spain for centuries and had a great life, thriving society, enormous wealth, good positions in the country. For example, the prime minister was Jewish, and at that same time, all Jews were exiled. He had to try. He had tried to make a good word to the king, and they put it off. The delay ended just at 9th of off, and then at 9th of off, and they all had to leave Spain. Can you imagine? A great society lived great there, the ministers, and there everything. They had, to, they had taken the Fernandes and other Spanish names. They behaved like Spaniards, great poets, great painters, but they were all Jews. Then Portugal followed. In the Portuguese synagogue in Amsterdam, they have in the small synagogue on the wall of all those names of the students of Etzhaim, a Talmud Academy, Spanish and Portuguese names like Gonzalez, the Costa, etc. They had adopted those names, adopted those, the, the people uh, where they lived. The intention is that they distance themselves from the Creator, enrich the country with its culture. They become the also here in the Netherlands who are the carriers of culture, the Jews. They become real Dutch. They really know how to propagate Dutch culture. It's okay, but they don't and they shouldn't be the main thing. The main thing should be the purpose that has been given to these people. Until now, the shelling that happened in Israel three weeks ago, uh, and uh, there are things that I don't want to tell you, where people at this time suddenly get enormous pain in exactly the same times. Why? Tshuva, tshuva is repenting to the Creator. It is during this time that Elohim is manifesting. We need to know that Avaya is Elohim, the Merciful. It is good for us that we experience Him in that period as Elohim, as a judge, because otherwise we cannot be human. Man consists of two forces, and must like the universe right and left. Man must, man must develop on the right and develop on the left. Therefore, we also need those special days in the year when we do special work in the left line. In addition, 
in addition to our own corrections. The purpose of this day, no, no eating, no drinking, we don't, do five, we don't do five things, five that correspond to the five kilim. If we do not eat or drink, we are not feeding the Esa. The human being who strives for unity with the Creator feels a little weak on this day, and that's okay. You don't always have to. But if you have fun and other things on that day, then, and the Esa is on that day big. You can feel it. And if you give a little bit to her, in that time a little bit of you is already a lot because you will feel weak and then you have some fun. That fun will, that fun is this day already a lot with respect to you is already, uh, is already a relative once. So again, and with respect to you, it is already a lot because you now have a few powers. The SI does not look at the absolute numbers of forces, but the relative ones. In this period, you have less power and you have fun for 5% with respect to your powers for this time. But that 5% is now an enormous strength of you and she will inflate it enormously. Of course, with respect to you, it always... Of course, with respect to you, it always maintains, it always remains as a shortage. It's not like you give to her and shortage. It's not like you give to her and she says hi and is gone. She takes it from you and sticks it to, and sticks it to you. It is yours, but you give it to her and she will envelop those powers as it were. She will, envelop as a, she will envelop it as a body with its envelope, and it will lead a separate life. She has enormous strength, especially on that day. There is one day a year in Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. You also have to pay attention, but then it is very different. It is not about unclean power, but that you are standing before the king, the king of kings. On that day, you have to be clear. On that day, you have to keep all kilim pure, clean, not even eat, not drink, etc. And then you stand there and you get forgiveness. Forgiveness and you also get the budget for the following year, just on that day of atonement. You get that. There are other things, but that's the most important on that day. But on that day of the ninth of Av, you have to deal with the unclean power and everything you give to her. She brings death to man, spiritual death, but that's the same thing. When the spirit leaves man, it is also dead. On that day, try. Of course, you have to work to, or to do something else, but, it, but do it, but less music. Or the whole study of ours, I'm not saying that you should do this or do that. No, but fear, because that is absolutely, that is absolutely unnecessary. So don't fear. You are a builder of yourself. You have to see for yourself what you do. We all fall short in that kind of thing. We want to have a little fun inside, a little bit for yourself. Precisely from inside, you shouldn't want to have a little fun, but keep yourself empty. You can do with the outside world as usual. The days of grace, the happy days, the days of that we empty ourselves and deepen our kilim, deeper and deeper. It may seem boring, a little, little fun, etc., but you can endure more, and your kilim that you had never been in, that you had never felt before. If you can bear that feeling, then after that, in those empty places that you had made on those days, joy and light and everything comes in there. Hisaron is a shortage that you make. It's a hisaron's a shortage that you make and it broadens you, etc. In short, that is what is important on that day, that we know what this day is. We do not need to say more. Later, as we correct ourselves, this day will turn more and more into absolute joy. For on that day also, the deliverer will come and we will see the connection between deen and grace. Everything is connected. And, and the connection between suffering for the sake of correction and the faster arrival of the Mashiach. Think of correction. And the faster arrival of the Mashiach. Also, of your own Mashiach. First, you have to get all the good out of your package yourself, where the unclean forces are. Bring out the good.
to the sacred side, pull up the above the parsa. Below the parsa is din, and above the parsa is chasidim. And that's how we should see it clearly. Malchut is din. And another thing, it also teaches us that this world was created by din. Do not flee. Do not say that you want to be hypersensitive. Only with Kabbalah, you want to be busy with the higher, because then you do little about because then you do little about the Creator's plan and our development. In our world, Din exists, and that's okay. We have to put it up with this, with this Din. We have to put up with it. Within the within the Din, there is always Rachamim, grace. So, what you should what should be done? The question. Up to up to the Bina, there receive Hasidim. And then come back down to under the parsa where Dean is and learn to live with that Dean. Do not live in heaven, but on earth and in heaven, and your inner self stands as it were between heaven and earth. But you live on earth and in heaven. On earth, the lower side of your partsuf means the experience of your world, the lower world, and above the parsa, you experience the future world. Be well.